Hey, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to Holy Spirit Soapbox. I'm your host, Dan. I first want to thank you all for filling out the survey. Super helpful. Thank you so much. The link is still active and live, and we would love as much feedback as possible. So it should only take about 15 seconds to fill out, honestly, but we do appreciate your input. Today, we are switching things up a little bit. We're mixing it all up. Keeping it interesting, right? Grace Communion International was generous enough to allow me to give a sermon at their church group. So I first want to say thank you so much to Grace Communion. Their website is gci.org if you want to check them out. This episode will be a little bit longer than normal, but the sermon is called A Pretzel That Bears Good Fruit. Check it out. You know, today we're going to be talking a lot about the Trinity, right? So the Trinity especially emphasizing the comfort that comes from knowing that God is always with us, right? Um, it's crazy because no matter what translation you use, the, the word Trinity or triune God is nowhere in the Bible, mm-hmm. right? There might be new ones. I don't know if they're new uh, translations that we've put together somewhere in the world, most likely. Not. No. But <laughs> yeah, Trinity and triune God, nowhere in the Bible. So why do we use it when we refer to God? Why do we always use that when referring to God or the Godhead? You know, who God actually is. It's a big question amongst many mysteries of the world, right? Like we have all these questions that pop up, like when will the world end, right? No. Um, what does heaven really look like, smell like, feel like? How is that going to feel, right? And, and other questions like, Are house slippers still called house slippers if you live in an apartment? I don't know. There's so many (laughs) mysteries that we can't explain. We're going to have to ask God uh, those big, hard-to-answer questions. No, that's stupid. How did you like this? So, (laughs) no. um, Okay, so we have to step back, right? Historically, the word or term Trinity or triune God, it was brought about by a guy named Tertullian. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. In 213 AD, okay? Sounds like a pasta dish, Tertullian. Yeah. <laughs> what who, who, he started this illustration, right? Because people were so confused. This was about, what, 150 years after, 100 years after all of the different gospels and epistles were written, right? And people weren't they were getting it, but they weren't getting it. So he had to make this illustration of, hey, you know, what if it's this thing, right? It's like God that's three in one. How about that? He wrote that in a letter. And people are like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Maybe, yeah, maybe we start using that. Over time, about another 100 years or so, the Council of Nicaea, when we heard of the Nicene Creed, they had all these conversations. We had all these church leaders, and they all agreed that, hey, yeah, let's use this as official church doc- doctrine going forward. It's worth it. It makes a lot of sense when you start putting the, together the essence of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. We read in the scriptures. Um. But we also have to break down God a little bit, as much as we can, right? And understand uh, who God really is. And we understand who God is, right? God, we heard of God. Um, We talk about him throughout history, creator, father, big man upstairs, whatever you want to call him, right? There's so many different adjectives. He is, I am, alpha and omega, right? And even people that don't really know God or might know God a little bit. They talk about God. You know, I believe in something, uh, you know, something bigger than us, right? They God. Um, and sometimes they use the name in vain, in vain, OMG, you know, thank God for certain things. And that's not the only way to use his name in vain, by the way, but um, we'll get into that. But we know God. We know Jesus, right? Historically accurate. This, this dude walked the earth, right? The savior of ours walked the earth. He walked as God in the flesh, Something of substance, right? He, you, you touch him, see him, feel him, eat with him, drink with him. You know, it's, it's, he was, he is God. So he's the perfect example of who God really is and where God's heart is. But then he had to go again, right? He had to go <laughs> and he was sent here to become that sacrificial lamb for us to cover our, us of all of our sins and then give us that full view of what a God's heart looks like. But what about that third portion? Trinity, try three. What about that third portion? Call the Holy Spirit, right? So Jesus' job here was complete. And uh, 
he was sent back up to heaven. He got ascended up, right? Uh, at the, the right hand of the Father. So if I'm the apostles, and I'm the disciples at the time, I'm probably like, this dude keeps leaving us. I don't understand why he keeps going. He told us a couple weeks ago that, you know, I have to die. I have to go on this cross or I'm going to be beaten and I'm going to be, you know, spit on and all these different things. And, and it's going to be happening. Just be prepared for it. And then he comes back. He gets resurrected. Hung out with them. Had all these situations where he's walking with people. And then he's like, yeah, so I have to go. I have to go again. And they're like, oh, my gosh, this is just crazy. Right. I thought he'd never forsake us, things like that, right? So I can't imagine the fear and anxiety. And I think a couple of weeks ago, we had some, you know, Tom and Rod, and we've all talked about these apostles just getting scared, right? I don't know what to expect now. You know, I know he's, I know he's God. I know Jesus is, is the one, but I don't know what to expect going forward. He said, we're going to be beaten because in his name, because people don't like him. If they hate him first, they're going to hate you too, right? You know, we heard, um, in John 16, 12 to 15, right? His replacement is coming. I put this in quotes. Air quotes. I use a lot of words all the time. Um, this entity or spirit of truth that will take Jesus' place and provide wisdom for all man who accepts and is baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and said Spirit, right? You got to think, aside from being scared, when Jesus was around, how awesome was it to be able to walk if you... You're scared, right? Uh, you're worried about anything. It's a coyote that comes up at your camp. Like, Jesus, please. <laughs> you know, you can hug him. You can cling to him. Right? He was a person. You feel him. If somebody asked questions about the Pharisees and Sadducees, were, they were just throwing stuff all, all over at, at the apostles, the disciples, at Jesus. You can just be like, I don't know what to say. Jesus will speak for you. Right? But now with him gone, what do we do? The advocate comes up. Right? Anybody know what this is? Pretzel. Pretzel. <clears throat> nice. Exactly. It's a pretzel. And I'm totally stealing this from, not the pretzel, I'm totally stealing this concept from somebody else, to be honest with you. But a pretzel. But you bought the pretzel. I bought the <laughs> pretzel. I just want to make that I clear. Don't, yeah, I follow the commandments as <laughs> best I can. Um, no, pretzel, right? Three spaces, all intertwined. As soon as you start breaking off a piece, Anywhere, I'm not going to be fixed. I don't want crumbs and all this. But if you start breaking off pieces, it becomes not a pretzel anymore. Right? You can take from middle, from side, whatever. Same goes for the Trinity. For God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Same thing. You start breaking them apart. Right? We talk about them separately all the time. You know, I'm praying to God, or I just believe in God, or I, Jesus is a cool guy, but I don't think he's, you know, he's not the Savior. We break him apart in different ways, but they all work together, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? One fluid motion, right, to, to glorify God. And it's confusing, right, because we, we like to do one being equals one being, right? So one plus one plus one would equal three. But, you know, because God's outside, time, space, and matter, it equals one. So we can do like one times one times one. One that would make more sense mathematically for us, but when we think back into the Hebrew translation, or when, when it was written in Hebrew, the word Elohim, right? That means plural gods, right? Plural beings. But when they wrote about God in the Old Testament, it always referred back to one true God. That word Elohim combined, right? That was one true God. So in Genesis, other places in the Bible, God refers to himself as us or our. Let's make man in our image. All right. So we, we continue on, right? So in, in the four Gospels, so now we know God, right? We go back into the Gospels, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and John. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, right? The Holy Spirit descends on him. A dove. Heaven opens up, right? Dove, huh? One, two. We got two. We got two. We got two. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I know where you're going. You go. You know where I'm going. Well, I'm gonna, <laughs> so yes. Yeah, so we got Yona, which is um, so. This is this is a dove in Hebrew. I'm giving you guys a lesson today. I don't know why it just kind of popped in my head, but Yona is is the same word as dove, or that's that's the word for dove in Hebrew, um, similar to Jonah. I learned all this stuff recently too. Jonah, same word, 
But as Jesus said, he was going to be in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights, as was Jonah and the fish for three days, three nights. Same thing in the symbol of peace, too. I saw the little tidbits. You know, it's fun. Um, but when he was baptized, yes, the Holy Spirit came down, you know, onto Jesus and, and God said, right, this is my son whom I love. This is, the you know, so he, they combined, right, and that's, that's the visual that we got, of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One. And, and listen, we might not fully grasp the Trinity ever. Um, it's, a, it's a tough concept, right? You know, we are, we have a three and a half pound brain. If you look at me, it's probably two. But, uh, you know, with three and a half pound brains, we can't grasp that whole concept of God and the Trinity. And that's okay, right? But we have all of this information, this mystery that keeps getting revealed, right? Um, as we get to know Jesus more and more. So Jesus, now when he was baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, he was able to perform those miracles and do all things that were by God, which is what the Trinity does. All right, I'm stealing more stuff here. So this stuff is from Grace Communion International. And so this is, um, this is some of the notes that they wrote in here. The Holy Spirit reveals Jesus, who came to reveal the Father's love and character. So he will guide you into all truth. We talked about wisdom, right? wisdom uh, coming from the spirit of truth. He will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. The Holy Spirit is in complete agreement with the Father and Son, guiding us into all truth. If Jesus is the truth, and the truth is the revelation of who God is, and the mystery of God's love and grace, the Spirit will continue speaking the same truth all together, just like this pretzel. He will declare to you the things that are to come. We can trust that the source of this revelation is God. We can also trust ourselves to recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit who will speak whatever he hears from the triune of God. The voice of the Holy Spirit will always be loving and kind, even when convicting. And then finally, he will guide us in living out Jesus' revelation of God. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you, all that the Father has is mine for, for this reason. I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The doctrine of, uh, doctrine of the Trinity is practical as it addresses how we participate in God's revelation in the world through Jesus by the Spirit. Okay, so again, I'm reading from something specific, but it's harder to discern not being physical. Okay, but he is there if you're open to receive it. You have to receive the Holy Spirit. Um, stepping way back, right? Even though Jesus became glorified and went to the right hand of God, he never left us. The Spirit is continuing to move. The Spirit of God continues to do work. So this is a good segue, all right, into mentioning the fruit part of the pretzel that bears good fruit, okay? <laughs> In uh, Galatians 5, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, we hear about how the spirit moves, the fruits of the spirit, okay? When God's spirit is in you, when you've accepted Jesus in you and the Holy Spirit, the following things happen naturally since these are what God's spirit is all about, God's character, God's nature. I think Pastor Tom mentioned that last week, right? And here's what it says. This is chapter 5, verse 22, Galatians and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. When you look at the Old Testament, there are, what, 634-something commandments, I think, in the entire Old Testament. That's overwhelming, right? Even the Ten Commandments are like, okay, I have to have this checkbox, right? But this says that all of those things cover all those commandments because it's the Holy Spirit that's doing it. It's not us. It's the Holy Spirit that's doing the work through us. So all of those things are results or fruits that bear when we accept the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit actually move, right? So when you see these things literally coming to fruition, it's a pun, fruit, fruition. <laughs> fruit, 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 fruit. fruit. 
so bad. Well, you keep going, and we'll see how much fruit you bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. We'll see. We'll have a survey after this. I'm just kidding. So that, <laughs> without selfishness. So if we start letting that happen, we, you know, consistently without selfishness, then we're seeing God's spirit. Okay? The miracles we saw with Jesus, right, and the disciples and the apostles were a direct result of the Holy Spirit. People getting raised from the dead, right? People that were lame. That was the whole, that was God's spirit moving. Now, I'm a firm believer, and this is a damn thing, but it's with biblical backing, right? um, that all things have spirits. That's my, this is my concept and how I understand it a little bit better. Is, here we go, right? When you take in these spirits of the world and replace them with, with replace the Holy Spirits that are in you, or the Holy Spirit that's in you, um, those fruits will bear. Worldly fruit looks different. It does. It can look similar, but sometimes it looks different. And I've noticed this with myself. You know, if I'm watching, I don't know, if I'm watching like a show that has, you know, certain things that are not glorifying God, to lightly put it, right? If there's something like, you know, gangster movie or <laughs> something like that that I partake in, you know, when you start ingesting that and allowing those spirits in, that is when, when you're squeezed, when situations arise, those fruits may bear the way that you, the influence that you receive from the spirits of the world. That makes sense, right? That's why, and it, it, let me step back. It's, there's no problem with those things, right? There's no problem with, you know, enjoying certain types of, mov- of movies or music or, or talking about certain things like sports or whatever, right? There's nothing wrong with those things. But as you continuously take those in and mm-hmm. not dig into God's word, not allow the Holy Spirit to work in you, then those fruits start to bear. So this is why it's important to dig into God's word, right? Understand who Jesus is and accept and allow yourself to be filled with the Holy Spirit to allow God's work to be done. We have examples of this in Acts chapter two. uh, We hear about the Holy Spirit doing miraculous, crazy, awesome things, right? The Acts of the Apostles is basically the continuation of Jesus' work after he was ascended. When the apostles were praying in the upper room, the Holy Spirit came in as a wind, right? This is Acts chapter 2. And all of a sudden, there's talking in different languages, you know, so they can go out and spread the gospel. Now, people thought they were drunk, okay? That was the first time, like, are these people okay? I try learning a language not drunk, and it's so hard. I can't imagine learning a language when you're drunk. So apparently, they were. <laughs> that was the Holy Spirit that was working, okay? I was just thinking, if that's all it takes to learn to... Jeez. Speak another language. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to give up my forbearance on alcohol. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Maybe that's why they call spirit spirits. Is that why? So you can just think it in and you get languages? I don't know. No. So, yeah. so people think, you know, it's crazy. That's, that's, that's one thing, right? We saw them work. And then they saw the Holy Spirit work and what it does in you and through you, right? But later in the book, however, chapter 8, I think it is, Philip travels to Samaria. And he's ta- preaching the gospel to all these different people. Okay? People are starting to be like, yes, it's great. They get baptized in water. All right. But this one guy, his name was Simon Magus. And Simon, Magus meaning magician or sorcerer, was a magician or sorcerer. And so what he was doing was he was doing these miracles of raising people from the dead, but they really are dead. Was, uh, you know, healing sicknesses or people were blind. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, I can see. But it was all magic. It was fake. He saw, uh, so Peter and John came and baptized people with the Holy Spirit after Philip baptized with water. And then they started seeing real miracles happen. They saw things change and move. And Simon was one of those guys. And Simon said, hey, I got like 15 bucks. Can I pay you to get that? Peter, who was filled with the Holy Spirit, was like, get away from me. Right? He was like, no, this is not, you can't buy God. <laughs> you can't take out a $100 bill and be like, yes, I'm going to have miracles now and it lasts a certain amount. So that's taking the Holy Spirit or trying to take advantage of the Holy Spirit for self, right? When you do that, his, he was taking in those spirits of magic. He was taking in those spirits of, of selfishness. And this is who I want to be in this. I want a crowd, right? This is what I want. And then he tried to buy that, those miracles. It doesn't work that way. We don't know what happened to him. I know that he was kind of scared after all that whole situation, um, when Peter rebuked him. But um, we have to remember that the Holy Spirit is not here to be used for self. 
Okay, that's big. Um, and this is what taking the Lord's name in vain is. That's another portion of it, right? You can say OMG or, you know, thank God or do these, say these certain things. And that is taking his name in vain, but also praying for stuff for self. I want this Holy Spirit in me to work. That's, that's one thing to glorify God. But if you're like, I want it to raise people from the dead so I can do different things, so I can have a following, whatever it is, for selfish motives. Without including the Holy Spirit as the Trinity, or as God, I should say, um, we don't have peace. We don't have true peace. We really don't. Um, we can try and follow Jesus the best we can. We can read about God the best we can. Um, but every, you know, if we don't let the Holy Spirit lead us, it, everything's in vain at that point. Right? Holy Spirit does the work, not us. Holy Spirit convicts us to prune us. Now we're talking about fruits, right? Prune. Get rid of those other spirits that we take in, you know, that are not natural. They're not natural. God's spirit is natural for us. That leads us to pure joy and wisdom and all those other fruits that we heard of. And it wants to work on us, right? But we have to be pruned. We have to be got those branches, those yucky things that are in us. Got to get rid of them, right? So we can keep moving forward in the Holy Spirit and produce that fruit. And then he lets the good branches grow. Be fruitful. Here's what he does. Small, short list, right? He gives us comfort knowing God is always with us, even after, after Jesus was raised up, right? Gives us comfort. When the apostles were scared, when the disciples were scared, when they knew that they were going to get persecuted and beheaded and tortured for Jesus, they had comfort. We heard about Paul in prison, singing, rejoicing, right? Who does that <laughs> if you're in prison, right? If you're in prison, you, you sometimes you're just down, you make get angry, and those are the fruits of the world that will pop up. But him was he was filled with the Holy Spirit, right? And that's why he was able to sing and write letters of wisdom for everybody. So we know that that comfort, God's always with us. He convicts us to change so we can be spotless and blameless and great ambassadors of God's kingdom, right? We're told to be ambassadors for Christ. If you're an ambassador, right, an ambassador, you're representing a country, a country or a nation, and we all come from God's nation, right? We're born of God. We're from God. We are created by God. So we have to be these great ambassadors, and the way that we are is by allowing the Holy Spirit, again, to work through us and convict us to change when we're not, <laughs> when we're filling ourselves with like other types of spirits, you know, to be spotless and blameless. And then he also gives us gifts and performs miracles to continue to spread the word, the gospel, and, and to glorify God. He gives us the ability to go out and do make disciples of all nations, of all people, and baptize them in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then he speaks on our behalf, right? When Jesus was being, you know, persecuted, when he was actually on trial. Sometimes he just stayed silent. Sometimes he spoke. Sometimes he didn't, right? The Holy Spirit wanted to move. It was moving through him and speaking through him when he needed to speak. Peter, all of them too. He is paraclete. Paraclete in Greek is our counselor. He's our advocate. He's next to us all the time. And the list keeps going, right? There are so many things that the Holy Spirit does. So if you've experienced like anxiety, grief, worry, stress, I mean, I have gray hair like poking in here. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah, can you see him? No. You gotta get, no. 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 I can't get the lights. Can you see any of mine? Yeah, I don't, I don't see him at all. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> well, all these things are detrimental. Right? They're so bad for your body. They really are for your brain and your body. We learn about this every day with science where we can understand God is better. And they pull you away from God. They distract you. Stress is, is really distracting, right? Like, you see all these things like, you know, gas prices are flying through the roof, and grocery, groceries are up, or whatever percent. You get worried, right? But then we seek other things, other spirits that fill us. 
you know, I'm scared. So I'm going to drink, right? I'm worried I'm going to smoke this or <laughs> do this or eat or whatever, right? That's, those are situations where we depend on those things. And that's never good, right? I mean, the, it's just funny. It's horrible. Like on the way up here, right? Like there's so many times where I'm like in traffic and then you see like the fruits of the world. Come out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Really bad. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So pray for me. But, um, yeah, but they become disabling, right? So, but Jesus, he's like, no, don't worry about these things. Stop worrying about these things. You're going to get what you need, right? There is a helper. This is God's spirit. He'll help you through anything that you go through. So then when you start accepting him and soaking that up, right? Allowing the Holy Spirit to work in you, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control sprout all those fruits start to bear we know that he's working to do all great things to show what people what the kingdom of heaven looks like that's the goal right then these fruits make us great ambassadors for the kingdom and these fruits will keep us from indulging in the fruits of the world that can't save us the other fruits can't save there's only one way to be saved so All in all, if you look up to God and you pray to him and you worship him, that's great. If you try to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, that's cool. That's great. And if you remember that the Holy Spirit is a a being and got baptized in him as well, that's fantastic. But we can't forget that the pretzel or the Trinity is like the pretzel, right? It's intertwined together, seasoned with salt. (laughs) And when we take it all in, Take it all in as communion. That is very dry. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> we are now complete in shalom. Or in peace. Okay? Because the fruit, of, the spirit of God is now in us and does all things for God's will to be done. And you are now intertwined with God to participate with. Mm. Amen.